Hey, hello and welcome once again. This is Reflex Image. If this is the first time visiting, don't forget to like and subscribe to my channel and also turn on the notification icon. If you have any question, you can contact me. We're about to get back to you as soon as possible. And also, if you're already a subscriber, welcome back. So in this video, I'll be showing you how to achieve this great picture, this very very nice picture, in the easiest way possible. So I actually dropped a video course which I just dropped this January. If you want to learn, I actually get on my backdrop, especially how I created backdrop like this from other backdrop, because this was actually not downloaded. I actually created it myself. If you want to know how I actually do that, actually use other pictures as backdrop. This course is for you. So it's currently selling for just fifty. US dollar, which is 50,000 Naira, it entails my three years experience in the photography and the manipulation industry. And also, I'll be giving out files and work materials, also, you can actually practice it in your own leisure time. So, there are so many details, there are so many secrets there. So, don't forget to actually go to my store and purchase them there. I'm giving it 12% discount right now. You can use the keyword family on my store. So, you're going to get a 12% discount on whatever product you buy DB, my valet, my PNG, my lodge, my presets, etc. etc. So with no further ado, let's jump into action. First thing first is for me to actually make some basic adjustments in my camera roll, which I actually did. Please, if you want to be shooting studio picture, make sure you shoot it on raw. Try your possible best to shoot on raw. So let's see everything is done now. The next thing I'll be doing right now is to open my picture in Photoshop and wait for it to load up. Let's wait for it to load up. So after that, the first thing we need to do is to expand our background to the perfect way possible. And as you all know, I love my background, I love my pictures to be on 4 by 5 pixel because I love posting mostly on my IG page, that's my Instagram page. So I'll actually go to my crop, I'll go to my crop too. I'll make sure I'm selecting 4 by 5 pixel. In case yours is not there, just open the air, you're going to see it's 4 by 5 pixel, click on it. So expand from the side like this expand from here like this until you actually get your desired backdrop so don't worry about all the space we have here we're actually going to fill that up right now with just single simple clicks after you're done with the extension right now the next thing you need to do is to click on your rectangle marker too then scroll over here like this ctrl t for free transform hold on your shift key then you drag until you're no longer seeing any blemishes there again click on your o key ctrl d to deselect do the same thing here also. Ctrl T for free transform. Hold down your shift key. Then you drag to the edge again until you are no longer seeing any blemishes here. Click on your OK. Ctrl D to deselect. Come down here also again. Do the same thing. Ctrl T for free transform. Hold down your shift key. Then you drag down. Click on OK. Ctrl D to deselect. So some of my that did not see the raw of the picture. I actually thought this is how wide the studio backdrop is. So Try to confuse your enemy once in a while. Don't let them know the secret about everything you do. So that being said, right now, the next point of action is to actually do the retouching. I won't be doing the retouching in this video. If you want to learn how I do my retouching when it comes to the manipulation aspect, kindly visit my store and purchase my video course there. It's actually going to help you a lot, improve and become a good manipulator in no time. Not just the manipulating aspect alone, uh, there are some other tips I actually left there for you to become a better photographer, just like me, and how to actually stand out from others. So, that being said, right now, the next thing we'll be doing if you are to jump our retouching is to actually rem remove our subject from the backdrop. So, first thing first is for we to actually duplicate our background layer by clicking on Ctrl J. So, now let's name this subject right now Subject SUB Subject Layer. SUB. Let's just name it SUB. So after doing that, I'm going to select my quick selection tool. I will select it. Then there are so many ways to actually crop out picture, but I'll be using the easier technique, which is my select subject. If you are using the Photoshop of Creative Cloud 19 and above, you should be able to have this picture and the higher your Photoshop version, the higher uh the better the work it. So I'm going to click on my select subjects. Once I click on it, I'll wait for it to load up so that I wait for the AI to do the job for me. So let's see what it's actually going to give us. It's not going to give us a perfect thing, but it's going to give us an head start. So now let's see the head start that it's going to give us right now. So as you can see, it gave us something nice, but not all that perfect. So we're going to be doing the selection perfectly ourselves. So zoom in first, then go to the area I want to make adjustments to. 
go to the area I want to make adjustments, amendments right now. So I'm going to pick my polygonal axle too. So firstly, I will go to the addition aspect. I'll go to the addition aspect and I'm going to select. I'm going to add to the selection first. I'll add to the selection. Here yeah, is going to be on subtraction because I want to remove the background from here. So I'm going to change it from addition down to subtraction. I'm going to click on it. Subtraction. So here yeah, also again. Let me zoom in. Here yeah, also again. Subtraction also. Just make sure you take a possible time to actually crop out your background perfectly. As you can see. Here yeah, on subtraction. Here yeah, also on subtraction. So just take your possible time. So I'm going to fast forward this process. Meet you guys at the end of this cropped out picture. So let's say I'm actually done with what I'm doing right now. I'm done with the crop out process. Don't worry about all this area. I'm actually going to show you how to clean that up perfectly. So more like you guys usually delete the backdrop, but let me teach you the best way possible. So all you just need to do is just to click on your max over here. Once you click on the max, automatically you actually remove the backdrop, but you actually don't know that right now. We have to turn on so much your background layer you actually see there's no backdrop there right now so once you turn it off right now double click on the max you're going to load, load up the property bar for you and make sure you're selecting the second brush and make sure it's on addition then zoom in very well so the area that you actually did not clean up earlier on just scroll over that area as you can see it's going to clean the background there up for you and actually leave the strands of it so let's try out the same thing here also as you can see we clean out the background in the air and also we still left the strand of air intact intact so let's do the same thing here also as you can see so let me reduce my brush size and do the same thing here also so let's do the same thing here also too let's do it here also as you can see it's very very easy to actually do that so after doing that right now all you just need to do is just to click on our ok and it's going to take us directly back into our photo shop so turn off, our, turn, off our, turn off our background layer right now. We are going to see we have our backdrop and if we have to turn it off, we don't have our backdrop again. So that being said right now, the next thing we're doing is to go back to our background layer again and duplicate it once more by clicking on Ctrl J. So this time around, we are going to name this our small thing. S-M-O. Click on it. So the selection we made here right now, just hold your Ctrl key down and click on the max. As you can see, it's actually brought back our selection for us. All you just need to do, do is to go to select, under select, go to modify, then click on expand. So we are expanding by 8 pixel, expand by 8 pixel, click on OK. After I do that, just right click on it, go to fill, wait for it to load up, then fill it up with content away. And wait for it to load up. Don't forget we are working on our smoothing layer right now. That's the layer we are currently working on right now. So let's actually fill that area up now. All you just need to do, do is to go to select, under select, go to modify, then click on expand. So we are expanding by 8 pixel, expand by 8 pixel, click on OK. After I do that, just right click on it, go to fill, wait for it to load up, then fill it up with content away. And wait for it to load up. Don't forget we are working on our smoothing layer right now. That's the layer we are currently working on right now. So let's actually fill that area up now. And boom, you might actually not know what to just do right now until you actually turned off your subject layer. Once you turn it off, you will see we actually deleted the subject from the backdrop. So turn it on back right now. Ctrl D to deselect. Ctrl D to deselect. So the next thing we're doing right now is to du duplicate this layer again. This is our smooth layer. Ctrl J. 
it's not necessary but i tend to make mistakes at times and i don't want to go back to like four or ten step backward i just like to go to the previous step and reduce that particular step again so that's the reason why i do something like this what you need to do right now is for it to blow out the background and make it look seamless so for me to do that right now just have to go to my filter under filter I'll go to blow then i'll click on my gaussian blow wait for it to load up then i'm going to increase the radius until i'm no longer seeing any blemishes in my picture again I think around 84 is okay you can still keep on increasing it till you're satisfied with what you want so i think this is okay for me i just have to click on my okay once i do that next thing i'll be doing as you can see my shadow has no, my shadows are no longer there again and to make our manipulation look more real and make it very, very realistic enough you actually need a shadow so that's where we are going to create a max on the place you just smooth out right now click the max on it then pick your brush make sure it's on 100 percent opacity and make sure the colors on black then scroll over the area you knew the shadow where before you actually blot it out to actually bring them back as you can see right now our shadow is back and our picture is looking very very real and looking all nice so that's just that the next thing you need just to do right now is just to go and bring in the file you'll be using so i'll go to my file manager i'll go to where my file is located i will search it out as you can see i have so many files over here this is the one i'll be using right now so as i made mention of earlier on this is actually created using another picture if you want to know how i do this and how i achieve these other backdrops also i actually came about getting them into my collection and some other backdrops i have kindly purchase my course which is currently on right now just for 50 dollar and you can get access to it so i just have to drag this down to my photoshop i'll drag it down i'll wait for it to load up and as you can see when i was dragging it in it was directly below my subject layer so that's why it that's how it actually should so i'll click on my ok as you can see right now but i don't like the way it's placing it for me i'll just ctrl c for free transform so i'm going to expand it a little bit just to make sure my subject is sitting right on it so make sure i'm trying to make sure my object placement is very very real and perfect so once i'm done i'll just have to click on my ok so from the blend mode i'll change it from normal as you all know bring it down to soft light but the issue i'm having right now is that after i change the soft light it's not giving me the look i want it's not giving me the intensify of the background the texture of the backdrop is no longer there but don't worry i'll actually show you i'll show you actually do that first thing first i'll just go to my adjustment layer i'll click on my hue and saturation under my hue if i don't want the color of this i'll just have to mess with my hue a little bit as you can see i think i love it around this way and also the lightness i'm going to bring down the lightness a little bit bring it down and bring it down a little bit as you can see right now so the next thing i'll be doing there's a particular lot which i always use to actually bring back shadows for my picture it's called my andorra standard i'll just go to my adjustment layer again i'll click on my color lookup click on load 3d lot and i'm going to pick it out and boom it actually add a little bit of texture to my backdrop now it's making my backdrop look very very real as you can see right now if I'm to select the last layer we started working on and to select the uppermost layer, group them together to see our before and after. Here is our before and here is our after. We just few and simple clicks. So to run this all up, let's open it back again. Click on our uppermost layer and add a little bit of vintage. So just I actually use my Eclipse Macro tool to create my vintage before, but let me show you another way to create vintage again. Create an empty new layer on your uppermost layer, create an empty new layer. Come to your gradient here, pick the gradient tool and make sure it's on from one color to nothing, not from one color to the next, from this to nothing. So click on it and make sure you're selecting the first object. Come down to the color palette here, change your color to black, 100% black. So from up here, scroll down, scroll down, as you can see, from left also, scroll down, from right also, same thing, from down also, as you can see, from here also, do the same thing. And also, if this is too much, just come to the opacity here and bring down the opacity. And here is the before and after. We added some dark vintage to the side of my picture. So now let's finish everything up by using my lot, which you all lose, which you all know I love using the most, which is called my Andor my Mela chocolate. I just have to go to my adjustment layer. 
I click on my color lookup, click on load 3D loads, and I'm going to scroll down to where it is. And boom. Look at the nice outcome we actually have. Some actually thought this is my studio backdrop. Very, very real. Here is the before and here is the after. Very, very nice. And it looks very, 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 very real. And that's the goal of manipulation to actually get a very super realistic manipulation. So I hope this video helps. If it does, don't forget to like and also share with your friends. Some out there might be in need of this. So see you guys on my next tutorial. So introduce my new video course to you guys. So once you just come to this area, you're going to see a link here starting from my newest video, which is this particular video I'm recording right now. But if you're not to see the link here, once you click on more, you have to see the link, which will redirect you straight to my store. Here is my first manipulation course, first video course for the year, and this is the first of all time. So trust me, you will need to get this course because it entails so many details, starting from how to set up my lights, how I do my light setup in my studio, and they are cheap light setup also. My camera settings both both for indoor and outdoor, basic photo editing, basic retouching, how to separate subject from backdrop, because that's the issue most people have when it comes to manipulation. And I'll teach you the tips and tricks on how to get that perfectly. How to create background from pictures, how to actually steal other photographers' backdrop. Uh, probably my backdrop, you love them and you want to remove my subject from it and actually use the backdrop for your own picture. So I'll be teaching you all that and also advanced manipulation and also how I do my studio color grading, especially when it comes to the manipulation aspect. And I'll be giving you guys free files also. I'll give you free files, free value, free PNG, my premium lot for just $50. And also, many people are requesting uh, where I get my backdrop from. And also, I'll be giving you guys the sites I use, the three major sites I use in getting my backdrop from both my backdrop, my PNG file, my lot file, my preset, so on and so forth. So here are the list of the files which are actually created, here are everything. So these are the recorded videos I did. You can see I put in my very best in creating everything for you guys. So just for $50, you should be able to get all this and also practice material, picture you actually used to practice with and also you can post them on your IG, your Facebook, your social media platform, or social media platform putting your logo there so i hope you actually go and buy it right now and also improve your picture editing skill this year as you can see it entails so lots more so let's jump straight back to business